Well, we are now at the very last part of the walkthrough. We're going back to this guy to retrieve our Dark Slayer, the best sword of the game. I'm showing this, and I'm glad he's saying this, because he's telling me he needs more time. If this happens in your game, all you really need to do to fix it is to get another level. So unfortunately, this means that mini bosses that are easy to level upon are dead, but just find some other monsters like the demons, for example, in the uh, space for completion, get a level, and then come back and the sword will be, be available here on his table. Now that we have the Dark Slayer, there's a couple of doors that open for us, revealing some great treasure. The first is right here by where we got the sword. We're uh, going to go towards where there's a save point, but not go to the save. The second door is easiest to get to, starting at the flask maker. And the third special door is probably best just to walk to. We're going to go back to the, our main gold fountain. It's uh, the one at the prison, and I will be walking the entire way there in this walkthrough, just in case you don't remember how to get there. Now at Necron's chair, I'm going to show you how to get to Gyra. There's actually a couple different paths you can take. This is what I find to be the easiest. Now when we get there, we're not going to actually fight him yet, but you'll see what I mean. I don't know what the game calls this last location, but it is a decent place to level up. It's not as good as the four mini-bosses before it, but if they're dead and you still want to get some levels, this is your best bet.
In case you didn't see it, behind Gyra is a sword. A very special sword that'll look very familiar to those of you who have played the Souls series, Demon Souls in particular. The problem with getting behind him is that you have to wait for him to do a specific move, one in which he puts his head down, and you have to be standing in the right place when he does it so that you climb over his back. If you're not right up next to him, then he won't do that move, but if you're too close, he also won't do that move. But of course, you have to be right next to him, as I said. He will also have the tendency to push you off into the cliff, and his attacks hit you for an incredible high amount of damage, as you can probably see. So getting this to happen is actually almost impossible. And it's barely worth it because the only thing you have left to fight in the game by this point is Gyra himself, and the sword he's guarding is not the best sword to use on him. Now, you'll see me use it anyway because that's who I am. I will want to use this sword no matter what. I consider it worthwhile to show you all my failures, so that when you're playing in your game you don't get discouraged. You can look on your computer and see someone who's, if I do say so, pretty good at Kingsfield, also fails a bunch of times. And this is why you need to make sure to keep a Dragon Crystal until the end of the game, so that you can get this sword and re-emerge at the fountain with it in your possession. If you don't have a Dragon Crystal, then obviously you're just going to be dead, and you can't get the sword and defeat Gyra or escape. There's no such thing. Does that beautiful sword look familiar? It's the Moonlight Greatsword from 15 years before Demon's Souls existed. Now as for Gyra himself, the best strategy is to have Breath at your disposal, the stronger of the two healing spells. Uh, you want to stick and move around him, make sure not to get caught in any of his uh, combo attacks like the spraying of the uh, blue dragon breath. Uh, you can kill those lasers that are float around him. They don't do that much damage to you though, so I don't usually bother. Uh, you need to look up and slash at his head, which is another difficult part of the fight because it can make you disoriented and sometimes you'll just walk off the cliff. And speaking of the cliff, be careful because he will try to push you off, even though you're no longer going for the Moonlight Greatsword. A couple of key strategies to fighting Gyra. You always want to use a healing spell whenever you're near 150 HP. Gyra does have a couple of attacks that are stronger than this, so you want to keep yourself fully healed. And then also, hopefully you've been saving all of your Seep's Plumes. They'll allow you to use magic for a period of time without any MP cost. This means you can cast spells without worrying about using your gold flasks to restore your MP. You can save them for your HP.
And that's that. Please try and enjoy the ending. I know there isn't sound or music for you to enjoy, but it's a little confusing and short-sighted even if there is. I hope anybody who's watched these has definitely enjoyed them. I, uh, I do apologize for my lack of better recording ability. I hope that's something I can fix in the future, and uh, if I do, I'll probably actually do a whole playthrough of this game with, uh, without commentary and just the audio from the game. 